Welcome to the Archaeology and Metal Detecting Magazine Weekly Newscast. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's our first live broadcast from the Archaeology and Metal Detecting Magazine Newscast. Uh, tonight we've got a special. Uh, we're replacing, unfortunately, uh, Mike's had to cancel this week's All Metal Mode UK podcast. So, in its place, uh, you get us, my, myself and tonight's guest coming over from the show... Uh, Mr. Tom Thomas. Now, Tom uh, had an interesting uh, article in the public domain recently regarding a coin he had no idea regarding the value. So, good evening, Tom. Good evening. How are you? I'm not bad. How's yourself? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. So, obviously, before we we go into discussing uh, your find of 30 years ago, when did you start metal detecting, Tom? Well, I, I started, must be some 10 years before that, but uh, I didn't get really serious into it till about the early 90s, mm. sort of thing. And uh, what machines have you used in that time? Well, I mean, my first machine uh, was um, the, uh, an old C-scope. Well, I couldn't get on with it, it was too confusing, but yeah. eventually I went on to the laser and I stuck with that for a long time, which I found was very good. And this is, I believe, what I found the coin with, was with the laser. And then obviously moved around different um, machines, and I'm now with a Deus and a, the CTX 3030, both which I find are very good machines. But well, those are the machines I use now. And both excellent machines in their own right as well. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah. very much so. Different circumstances, what? different times, and all the rest of it. What area of the UK uh, do you live? I live down in, in Berkshire, uh, down towards Reading area. Right. And most of my detecting is done sort of around the county ground there. I'm with you. And uh, obviously you've, you've, you've detected that area more or less your entire time of metal detecting. Yeah, mainly Berkshire, Oxfordshire, Buckinghamshire, Bedfordshire. Those are the main ones around that area. I right. do sort of thing. So, obviously, you have been detected a number of years. Um, other than the yeah. coin that you we, that we'll talk about a bit later, what other uh, finds of consequence have you uh, discovered? Um, I've had uh, several other silver Roman coins. Nothing like the one I've just had or uh, found. Um, obviously, plenty of shotguns, cartridges, plenty of buttons. I've had a couple of gold staters, and I had a very nice artifact, which was 15th century gold. It was about the size of uh, a postage stamp, and that right. was a picture of Virgin Mary being handed a book from, or a present from her mother, St. Anne. And that was taken, but not taken, obviously. They, they had that from me, the British Museum, which was very good that they had that. And oh, marvellous. The British Museum now. So that was a lovely artifact. It sounds it. Really nice. And so... Same old hat, I'll get a few hammered and normal sort of coinage that you find. But I do like the artifacts more than the coins, to be honest. I really mm. do like the artifacts. I'm the same myself. I mean, obviously, the the, uh, the general uh, consensus in metal detecting is that the, the finder finds is a hammered coin. That's what most people go out for. But uh, when I went out not long ago, I found one or two coins, nothing of consequence, you know, Victorian and such like. But the find for me uh, was a Victorian pair of nutcrackers, which is an artifact. Mm-hmm. Absolutely fantastic. It's uh, it's something that, you know, it's on display in my little cabinet and it's something that I'll I'll have uh, with me for a long time. It's uh, it something you'll something... cherish. I... Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the, the feeling of that, I mean, a coin is a pocket spill. It could have been made and it could have been dropped straight away. But the story within an artifact i.e. my nutcrackers there's there's a there's a history there of it belonging to people and such like so yeah I can completely agree with you there yeah. well I'm, I'm exactly the same coins are lovely I, and it's nice to find them but it's the artifact and um, I've been very lucky about five weeks ago I was very lucky I found uh, I've always wanted to find something in the Bronze Age and I found a Bronze Age spearhead 
And oh, that was beautiful to find that. And I've got that on display in my cabinet now. Oh, I um, can imagine. And that was, that was that was beautiful. That's beautiful. Although it's it was broken, not by me. It was broken in two halves, but it, they do fit together, and you, you can just see it's lovely as it is now. Um, and obviously, that's quite a, quite a few years old. That mid yeah. bronze age, and it is. So that's lovely as well. But that well, is something to, uh... special. It's an artifact. It's not a coin. It's the yeah. artifacts I really do like. You have to uh, send, send, them, send me a picture of that one, though. It'd be lovely I'll to do see. That. Was, yeah, no problem at all. That'd be good. Mm. No. So, any any other things of consequence that you can remember? <sighs> other things I found. So, like I say, um, oh, I've had I've had a few Roman pin heads, dress pins, which are, again artifacts. This is the artifacts I'm after more than anything. Um, more modern things. I do like finding. Nice buttons. We always find buttons when we metal detect them, shotgun cartridges. But a nice button with a nice pattern on, uh, or a thimble. Again, I like the thimbles because they're personal. And I like to find items like like that. Or the crota bells. I found quite a few crota bells, and ah. as long as they still, once you clean them out, they still ring. They're, I think they're, they're marvellous. They're really good. Really good to find Certainly things like this. Are. You don't have to always go for the old stuff. The more modern. As you come closer to our day, some of those items um, are extremely, extremely sought after as well. I believe yeah. for myself, that is for myself. Maybe not for other people, but certainly for myself, they are. It's great. Again, I totally agree. So, uh, what I take it now, this would yeah. the coin that we're going to talk about would be your favourite find. Um, obviously because of the signet well the most surprising find anyway it's the most surprising find once I found out what it is and it may sound silly but I think uh, my nicest find is the spear is the spearhead or um, the gold item I've just mentioned yeah those those two are something special yes this coin is lovely and it, it is the only one in, that is registered in the world but it's it's a coin I yeah. like artifacts. If you see where I'm coming from, yes, it sounds, yes, absolutely. sounds silly. It sounds ridiculous, but actually, I, I don't go for the value. I go for the what it means or it meant to somebody else. You can understand well I'm, how I'm coming around on that. Yeah. So, yeah. the find itself, uh, the, the coin. Can you actually remember finding it? I know it sounds funny, but being 30 years ago. Yes. Um, the reason I can fa- remember. Um, it's because a, a friend of mine who was metal tech, didn't, he saw it sometime late. He said, oh, that's something nice. And nobody's ever said that to me. So I, I remember when I found it and I was just uh, I was just detecting in some field and a very faint signal. I've been detecting all day and a very faint signal. I thought, well, I'll dig it just for something to do, basically. And I dug down and I remember it. It was, it was quite a, a depth. It must be about a good eight inches. And I found this coin, so it must have been lying flat. Otherwise, I don't think I've ever picked it up. But uh, I certainly remember digging it up. But it was a few days later, like I say, when my friend turned around and said, "Well, that looks nice," but I just left it at that sort of thing. Yeah, but I certainly remember that. Uh, a lot of my coins I remember digging up, to be honest. A good one. <laughs> I wish I had the memory. I, I can't remember what I'd done this afternoon at work. <laughs> yeah. So, in in the in the time scale that you've been detecting. Do you think the hobby's changed much? Well, drastically. I mean, all the, of the technical side, not very good with that side of things. But as we know, more and more machines are coming out. Uh, every year, one company or another company will bring another machine out and, I believe, trying to better the previous one. Um, and they, a lot of them are getting a lot deeper, um, which I think in some ways that's good. But you're going to dig up a lot of deep stuff, which may be maybe just rubbish, um, or you may be lucky and find something nice. Mm. But it certainly has changed drastically uh, through the years, and I think it's continued to do so you know, for many years to come. Yeah, we are. Work. We are certainly. Um, technology is moving on. Um, obviously, this year you've got uh, a new piece of equipment coming from Mine Lab. Uh, we've got the potential yes, of something coming out soon from uh, Rutus, uh, I think, um, Macro Nocta, 
and I'm That's sure true, there'll be much, much more. And obviously, with, with technology moving on, I'm a complete technophobe, Tom, to be honest. Um, I'm not. I'm not. That's something I'm not. I'm rubbish at things like this. Switch the machine on, show me how it works, the basics and what to do, uh, as and when in what circumstances, and I'll use one machine or the other. Yeah. I'll swap them up and change them as I need. Yeah, but um, I'm very much for simplicity if I can. So these people that talk about changing the discrimination and things like this, I yeah. go, yeah, okay, fine. I'm happy I've, with I've been I known think. in the past to uh, to be in the middle of metal detecting and ring Luke up to ask him what what's the best settings to use. <laughs> oh God, yeah, yeah, it's all good. It's all learning. It's all a learning it certainly process, is. isn't it? Uh, yeah, and good. we are lucky in the respects of people like me who are a technophobe when it comes to give me technology, give me give me a, a hammer, give me a nail, give me an aircraft, and I'll sort it out for you. Give me a metal detector yeah. and I'm I'm scratching my head. Uh, we, and we've mowed things. Techni- as as you've seen this evening by me trying to uh, suss out the uh, I was gonna, I correct was gonna settings say that, but show. I thought I wasn't going to embarrass you. <laughs> oh, don't worry, I embarrass myself daily. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no, but we've made it anyway at the end of the day. But we no, certainly have. Um, seriously, I've, I just, well, when I first started, I had a very complicated machine with a Cisco and I went on to the laser and other ones, but they were very easy, switch on, almost switch on and go. And I just find that quite comfortable and um, quite rewarding by just having the simplicity. And like you say, with all the technology and everything coming through, it's, it's very difficult to sometimes tune in. I think also, if you're not careful, you try tuning into something and you overcompensate or whatever. Or if you just leave things, just go back to the basics and you'll just work through it. You know, you're probably right. You're probably right. Yeah. Um my my first machine many years ago was my dad's old C scope. Uh, from that, I bought a Garrett, which was a an analog Garrett. Uh, oh, yeah. That was in the early two thousands, and then I went away a bit again. And my next one up uh, was a Garrett one hundred and fifty, and obviously that's a plug in and play straight away. You know, yeah. As a basic introduction machine, there's not many much better. I don't think. No, uh, of that I've near never, I've never range, it. and then yeah, obviously moving on up, I've had uh, several mine labs. Uh, my favourite current one being the Ruter Salter seventy one, which has been mm. uh, borrowed out for a little bit, has just made its way back home. So I'm happy with that. So yeah, uh, yeah and, and technology has moved on, and we are in a a, a lucky period uh, f- f- to have that technology, uh, as you've yeah. said, the the machines that you've got are some of the leading machines in the field and are finding magnificent things daily. Yeah, but I think it's going to become quite exciting with the new ones that are coming up. And I'll be quite honest, I'm looking to see what's coming up over the next year or so. Yeah. And then decide. I I love the Deus. Um, The CTX I struggle with, to be honest. But um, um, and I'm just going to see what comes up and then take it from there. Give it. I always give machines a bit of a cooling off period, see what they're like. And then decide. I might decide then to purchase something nicer. Mm. If there is something nicer on the market that I, I can handle. Yeah, I believe one of the deepest of machines is the uh, the Bliss tool, especially I think the V5, the Beast. Uh, two of yeah. my friends who I go detecting with have got one each, and <laughs> just looking at it, it scares me. It's got so many knobs on it; it's unbelievable. Uh, it, it must yeah. take some some guile to actually get through to 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 use that properly. Anyway. I well, know. I think sometimes when you go too deep, you spend more time digging deep than you do mm. actually finding stuff. It's so a typical you... one. It's just not everyone's cup of tea. It's you know every each of their own. That's a great yeah. Believer in. Yeah. So, do you actually get out and about metal detecting much? Yeah, I'm, I go out with Mark Betcher from the Metal Detectors Club. Um, he's from Aylesbury. And I help him out. I, I dig with him every Sunday, sometimes Saturdays and Wednesdays, and um, with the club. And I help run the club at times when he's off sick or he's yeah. going away on holiday. So um, I do a lot with Mark and see the family. So that's mm-hmm. always very good. So I, I do get out once or a couple of times a week. Brilliant. So, Mark's uh, so a good friend of the show. Um, he, we we yeah, were well, obviously yeah. along a longer detectable last year, so I was able to meet him in the flesh even though he was very very harried and uh, 
obviously detectables done a metal detectives and detectables and mark and, and obviously pete from lp have done some fabulous things for the metal detective yeah. community with with their festivals that they've uh, put on and obviously the the metal detectives regular digs yeah well that's what i do and, and let you, you mentioned pete well leisure promotion that's who i i've always brought my detectors from up yeah. my um ctx but i've always brought them from from um pete or his dad but sort of thing i've always done it with them but um no i, I enjoy it i really do i enjoy the club i enjoy the friendship and the comradeship with it all and you know it's just just a nice atmosphere i find mm. really do it's good news and do you have many of your of your own personal permissions no no, no. i used to have i'll be honest i used to have quite a lot um but <laughs> I, I went through a stage where i dropped didn't drop out i just didn't metal tech very much and then um, i met up with somebody who's, who's not with us anymore a uh, lovely guy and i detected with him and and he got me back into the, the sport uh, back in the early 90s sort of thing. And then I've just pr- progressed from there uh, with, with detecting. And, uh, yeah, so, but no, I've got no permissions at the moment. Mm. Uh, I, I just found I'm with doing things with Mark most of the time, so I don't really have time to go off on my own, to be honest. I'm glad you actually called it a sport then, Tom. Uh, I've been list- I listen to talk sport regularly. And they've been having yeah. an argument this week about what can be called as sport, i.e. backgammon, chess, etc., etc. And to me, uh, as well as being a hobby, metal detecting is a bit of a sport. Uh, I think it's a sport because, you, yeah. If you yeah, were sorry. able to put an, an event on an Olympics or the Commonwealth Games and it was putting tokens in the field, you know, it's quite, you know, the, the amount of exercise that we get... Uh, it's phenomenal uh, miles that we walk so yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd like to class it as a sport well, I think it is definitely a, de- definitely a sport um, and you know it, it's one of those sports I believe that it's like fishing you could go out for days without catching anything and then one day you catch a big fish or you find something metal detecting and you think yeah this is all worth it plus mm-hmm. I like the comradeship as I've said within the sport and um Although it's not a competition to who gets the most, but whatever you find, I certainly find we show each other and it says, look, I found a load of buttons or I found a nice silver coin or whatever. It's, uh-huh. it's just all, all all very friendly and sort of, if you see where I'm coming from on that side of things. It is. It's uh, mm-hmm. something, obviously, I've been on a few digs and there's, I've made a hell of a lot of friends within the, uh, the metal detecting community, but going back to detectable, Last year, I was astounded to see the community spirit. And then there's been one oh, or yeah. two things that have transpired over the f- last few years uh, in a negative light, uh, yeah. you know, attacks on people and such like. And it's been very, very strong again how the community has, has pulled together. Uh, and and it, is, it is quite mind-boggling to see as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you're in Detectiveville, it means you didn't see me bombing around on the gator. <laughs> probably did we were at uh, myself and Luke were in the, the, the main marquee next to the route oh, yeah. Yeah. so uh, we, we, we created some uh, well Luke created some uh, paper magazines for the event uh, which we were giving away free of charge with uh, the opportunity to win prizes and I I thought 1500 would be enough uh, but people were taking more than one and then I think we we only kept a few hundred back to be able to hand out to uh, friends uh, and yeah. people who'd obviously had articles put in it as well. So uh, that was astounding. And that moving forward, we've um, Luke's come up with agreements for uh, to do that again this year. So we're looking forward to well, obviously creating the magazine, the free magazine again, because it's nice to see us digitally. Uh, obviously, yeah. the, the 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 website. Um, the Facebook page we've got thirteen thousand followers. The Twitter, Instagram we've got multiple flower, uh, followers. But to actually, for me to actually be able to hold a a copy of something that we've created is uh, was pretty That's astounding, nice. to be honest. So, yeah, that is nice. That's very nice. So, will you be at the detective all this year? I'm certainly hoping so. It's the uh, so. it's the well, plan I'll currently. Be <laughs> I'll be there. Well, I, you know, we've been doing. We actually 
started all Metal Mode UK uh, at Detectable last year. Mike, Mike uh, done a show, uh, rang me on my mobile phone. It ended up being two hours speaking to everybody at the event. So that was yeah. that was the pilot, and then we spoke about it thereafter, and it was it was created as the All Metal Mode UK podcast, and obviously people like yourself. Uh, like Scotty B and other people I've met via oh, yes, the show, yeah, yeah. speaking to them, it'll be it, it it's it's going to be great to meet people in the flesh, yeah. shake the hand and uh, chat to them one to one. Well, I'll look out. Yeah, I'll certainly look out for you guys. Just look for my caravan. It's a little like a little um, uh, tab caravan with a big yellow smiley face on it. You can't miss it. <laughs> I'll be the fat one with the blue beard. Right. Okay. <laughs> anyway, no moving on. Yeah. So. 30 years ago, you found a Roman coin. Yes. And uh, Mark, I think it was Mark, who came round your house for a barbecue. And I'll yeah, let you explain everything ago. that happened then. <laughs> well, basically, I found it in the early 90s. And I uh, obviously, I've said how it all happened. And I just put it with my collection of my other uh, Roman coins, a couple of silver, other ones I'd got, and left it at that. And then Mark and his family came round for a barbecue a couple of years ago. And he said, well, let's see your coins and what you've got. And he saw this coin. He said, that's unique. That is unique. And I thought, well, yeah, fine, whatever. And then cut a very, very long story short. He um, sent various photographs uh, to various people, including um, Sam Moorhead from the British Museum. And they confirmed that it was a unique one-only coin, which they hadn't seen before, which was very exciting and very nice to hear. But if he hadn't come, I would never have known about it. Yeah. And am I right in saying, er, it's the Roman, I'm, I'm reading this from the BBC website, which I've just shared onto the um, the news story, onto oh, the yeah. uh, chat room of, of tonight's show. Uh, it's a Roman goddess Salus feeding a snake rising from an altar. Yes, I've got exactly, yes, that's what it is. A silver denarius of Crossius. That's the oh, Croesus, the emperor, obviously. Yeah, exactly that, and that's what it is. And it dates mm. two eighty six to ninety three AD. Yes. Gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so that's when when good. Mark pointed this out, that you know that that it was what what it was. What what was your reaction? Um, surprised to be honest. I don't. I'd, I was just surprised because I had no knowledge whatsoever about it. And obviously it didn't. The penny, as we might say, the penny didn't drop, or the coin didn't drop, until he'd sent some photographs. We were out on a dig well, a week or so later, and it, then it came back to be confirmed that it was, or well, they suspected that it was a unique coin. That's the time I, it really sort of hit home, and I thought, I'm lucky I've found something that nobody else has actually found. Mm. So that was the exciting bit more than anything, and then obviously it's just progressed from there. So it's definitely a, a one-of-a-kind coin. Yep, it's been recorded by Sam Moorhead as um, a coin as such, and um, we just wait and see what happens with it. Uh, no? I yeah. bet you were absolutely staggered. <laughs> Couldn't put into words quite, but um, yes. But the th thing was, people were saying it's worth so much, it's worth so much. I thought, well, I'm not really... It's, it's nice to do get something out of it, obviously, but... Yeah. Um, um, it's, it's not so much that it's a case of what it is and what it represents and it's the only one in the world yeah. to actually hold something that's the only thing in, ever been seen in the world uh, up to now it, that is the most exciting bit is actually just holding it and imagine. it must have been difficult when you originally found it that you, it was just to you a Roman coin yeah it, it was just a Roman silver Roman coin like I said and I put it with my other Roman coins and uh, I just left it there and then eventually when I did find out, I, I still had it there, but I, t I took it out of the other silver coins and put it separate. Yeah. And then eventually I thought, oh, this is silly, people are knowing I've got it, so um, I put it in the safe and had it put away elsewhere in the end. So now it's, else well, it's actually with the auctioneers now ready to go with them. Brilliant. So, so I thought that was a necessary thing to do. Obviously, yeah. you, you put it in auction. Uh, I'm not going to ask the whys and why not. That's completely your... Uh, decision to make. I don't have a problem. I don't have a. I don't have a problem with answering that at all. I really don't. So, okay. so well, what made you decide, therefore, to to put it into auction? Well, it, it's it's unique, as you say, and um, 
I'm always worried that people know that I have the coin, which I don't have now, right. obviously. Um, and I'm just worried about there's some good and bad in the world. You just don't know what people might do or whatever. Yeah, yeah as so we spoke about leave, earlier, yeah. Rather than, yeah. rather than leave it locked up in a safe, in the, in the dark, it's a coin that would be nice to be exhibit, you know, shown to, well, at my place, but well, it can't be. But if somebody purchases it and it goes to a better home where it can be exhibited uh, under certain, certain circumstances, I think, great, that's, that's ideal. Totally understandable. Yeah, if you can see where I'm coming from. Because I'm not a person, I don't sell my coins, I've never signed any of my artifacts, uh, I don't sell anything, the only things that I've ever, any money crossed hand at all is only the ones that have gone to the British Museum. Yeah. Sort of thing. Uh, the rest, I don't, I really don't do it for the money side. But mm-hmm. this is something you've, you've got to think seriously about, what so, you're going to do. So when is the auction taking place? Um, it's been taking place, there's my notes, I've got my notes here. August the 27th of this year, we're at Hanson's Auctioneers. I think that's at Derbyshire. Yeah, uh, if I'm if I'm not wrong, the gentleman from there, he's, uh, he's been on a, a bargain hunt, I'm pretty sure. That's the one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, I actually done a, a, a little... Um, my brother's got some coins that he's come into by um, an, an auction. Uh, you know the, the lower yeah. level auctions, and uh, he asked my advice, uh, and obviously he's found out they've got a bit of worth, so he's looking at putting them through. So I've actually pointed oh, yeah. him to uh, to Hanson's and asked him to uh, communicate with Mark Beecher if he can. So uh, lucky thing. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. But, uh, so what's uh, the no, what's the process no. then with with auctioning? Um, I've been to local auctions, which is house clearances and such like. You know, where we have got a new house, picking up a table and such like. What's the the process with with this kind of auction? The honest truth is, I all I know is it's like I say, Mark Mark um, works uh, for this auctioneer, and um, I just believe that it goes there. It gets publicised, obviously, goes on the the web or whatever it does across the world. Uh, and as people are informed that this coin is up for sale or up to be auctioned, basically, and um, there's a reserve, and then we wait and see what happens. I don't know the ins and outs of it so totally. But, um, I'm sorry, I've, never, I've been to auctioneers auctions, but not in any particular great depth or anything. So I'm no expert on auctions at all. But as far as I know, that's what happens. Yeah. We just hope that a few people are interested in purchasing it. Yeah, I hope so. I Indeed. hope you're uh, you, you're very lucky with that. It is a, as you say, a one in a million coin. Well, maybe not one in a million. Maybe yeah. one in ten thousand. Yeah. Maybe one in hundred thousand. Obviously, yeah. there were there were some yeah. made, and there's probably others buried yeah. in different fields around the world. But in this case, it is yeah. the one and only. Yeah, and this is this is the uh, nice thing about it. And at the end of the day, it'll be sad when it goes, but at least I know that I've found it and I've held it. Yeah, and um, I think that is something nice. And I've certainly with some of my friends, I've shown them. I've said, "Here, hold it." So at least you can hold something to date. That's mm. there's only one of. And when it was yeah, um, appraised, what was the reaction of the people who appraised it? Surprise! Just surprise. Um, you know, a lot of it I, I didn't have met the people that, that said what it was, but um, it all came back a surprise. Um, one gentleman, uh, I'm not sure his name. He said, "Make sure you look after it." You don't drop it because of the age and obviously and all the rest of it. So I've had it. I keep well. I've kept it in a nice um, holder, so it's kept safely as I do with all the coins I have. And um, I think it just it was real surprise. And to be honest, I think a lot of people were, were you know couldn't believe it. And and what was Mark's reaction when obviously he saw it for the first time? Um. Well, Mark's reaction as he he'd be jumping about the place. <laughs> you know, he was great. He was cheerful and happy and pleased for me. Um, and it was good to see. It was good to see that other people were happy about it as well. And Mark was definitely happy about it. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. And I was to say, if it wasn't for him, I, I wouldn't have. It would be still in my um, cupboard somewhere. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah. So, what's next good. for you, Tom? Uh, out and about with the metal detectives, detectable and such like. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm up on my mum's today uh, this week, so I won't be back out with them till week on Sunday. No, week no week Wednesday. What is today? Wednesday. Yeah. Week today. Yeah, we're out somewhere at week on yeah, next Wednesday, so I'll be out with them then, helping him with the parking and making the money and all the rest of it. I'm doing a bit of digging myself, and then uh, we've got a few weekenders planned uh, around sort of around the area, so that should be quite good fun. But normally are a great fun. I suspect that the uh, the weekenders are the ones that you like getting away in the caravan and having your own little bit of man time there. Oh yeah, uh, I do enjoy it. My partner, she um, also detects, so she comes out with us, and. Um, uh, we go off on the weekend. We have a good laugh. And we help with everything and get as much detecting as we possibly can. So it's like the perfect it's, it's weekend getaway. Oh yeah, right. A few beers, not too many, <laughs> and a bit of a barbie with everybody else. That's good fun. Yeah. And this is one of the reasons why I'm uh, open to upgrade in the the next couple of years to some form of uh, camper van or Volkswagen transporter to do much the same. <laughs> Yeah, I've, yes, and also you got to remember that we are doing. There's not many, but we also have the females, which is a sport that come and join us, and they detect, and it's great to see that it's male and female getting into a sport together and really enjoying it and having a good laugh. It, it certainly really is, good. and I mean, uh, f- from my perspective, the likes of Digger Dawn, the likes of Jackie Smith, uh, yeah, Mandy it, yeah. Dale, and people like that, they have mm-hmm. opened a, a a bit of a doorway for women to say oh it's pretty cool goodness. to melt detect and over the yeah. last three uh, or four years yeah. since then people have been on YouTube it has actually brought a lot more women into the hobby yes and I think it, hopefully it will continue to do that I, I really do it's, as we say it's a sport and uh, more publicity we can get with more girls or females males coming and joining the, the better I really do Mm. And and obviously people who are interested in uh, taking part of any of the events that you talk about, they can apply to join the metal detective groups online. I take it. Oh yes, they can. They can apply. Um, they can also um, go online and just get in touch with with Mark or whoever, and um, get details from him, uh, and then find out information. Also, there's also the leisure promotions with Pete down at his shop. Go down, you know, go online, find out where the shop is. Go down there, have a chat with Pete, and he'll help them 100%. Give them good advice and and all the rest of it. Um, I can so the opportunity that. is there for everybody. Yeah, it really is good. And uh, detectable that takes place on the weekend of. Let's be paid. That's my own paperwork. Uh, Saturday the 14th and Sunday the 15th and that's yeah, Burford in Oxfordshire yeah that's um, Oxfordshire it's up towards um, Burford towards Leafield a village called Leafield not from Burford and yeah, it's course. up there we were there last year on this site yeah. going back to the same campsite but it's a very good campsite it, was, it was indeed and um, we're going back up there so I'll be going. I, I go up. I go up on the Monday, the Tuesday, and I stay there for the week. Yeah, helping out and setting things up. So it's it's a busy week, and by the time I've finished, I'm on my benders. Don't get any chance to detect, but that's what I'm there for: is to get on and enjoy it and meet a lot of people. And of course, really people is. like myself don't get to see everything that goes on behind the scenes: the setting up, uh, the marshalling, uh, yeah, the, the security. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's oh, obviously a, a well for days before and days after the actual weekend that'll go on. Yeah, we we like I say, I get up there. I think Monday the Tuesday, can put, put my caravan up or have it up there, and then just stay straight through, setting mm-hmm. up everything that's needed, uh, working right the way through, and then through the event. And then Monday is the hard day, clearing up all the rubbish. We have got a good team to do that. Very good team. Um, that run that the marshals are always excellent and we've got marshals that are on site plus we have marshals that go on to, out onto the field to make sure everybody fills the holes in yeah. and all that sort of thing and it, there is a lot to it um, a lot more than like you say that people realise and then the clearer which is fun 
I actually yeah. met uh, a friend of mine who uh, he's come to. A, well, he's 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 supported. I, I I think I ran about five uh, metal detecting rallies myself. Uh, four for the mayor of Rochdale, and one in oh, yeah. aid of the uh, Bosley. Um, there was a, a factory that exploded and killed five people uh, about six years ago, which is not far from me in Congleton. And uh, a chap who came all to them and supported me, John Shelliner, I bumped into him, Marshall, in at last year's Detectable, which was quite surreal. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know John. Yeah, really nice guy, old John, yeah. Yeah, he comes every year. Yeah, it was nice to, nice to see him. And again, people who I've met in the past from uh, the rallies that I was able to put on in the past... Uh, team of Yorkshire, all the Yorkshire lads who wear the military style clothing um, oh. to actually spend time with them outside of me marshalling and them metal detecting, that was that was fantastic as well, uh, again yeah, I, met, I got to meet people uh, Gary Blackwell, Gary Kuko I've spoke to before but never never met them, Pete Terrell yeah. uh, KG and Ringy Nigel Regton, all these people who I've spoke to numerous times and of course, Julian uh, Evan Hart as well. So it was nice to meet each and every one of them last year. And as we we've both said before, community-wise, it is it's not just about the metal detecting; it's about the community spirit and the getting on and the everything else that goes on at the event. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the social side, and you couldn't you couldn't do it without the marshals. You know, you've got to take your hat off to how hard they work and what they put in. Um, uh, and I totally agree. You, you meet some lovely people. And as long as you go there with the right attitude that you're going to enjoy yourself and maybe lucky to find something nice, uh, some do, some don't, but you go away with a smile on your face and you've had a good time. That's, that's what it's all about. Mm. Sometimes it's not, I don't believe it's always about finding things. It's about the social side and yeah. everything else that goes with it. And not an ounce of trouble mm. either. No, that's what you want to avoid, trouble, yes. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, no. You know, alcohol no. is consumed no. and everybody just gets on and sits around the fire yeah. and get to know everybody. Yeah. And a bit loud at times, but that's what it's all about. <laughs> I mean, good to laugh. <laughs> it certainly is. Yeah. No, it's good fun. Look forward to this year. Mind you, he had the earlier one, didn't he, in the spring? Small yes. Detectorville. Which was, was good. And, um, how can we put it? It was an unexpected, massive success. <laughs> very good. It was brilliant. It really was, especially with the finds and everything. Yeah. It was very, the horde all the rest of it that was good mm, no most enjoyable uh, I certainly looked it again we were supposed to be coming along to that but uh, I had to have surgery about two days before so that balls that up <laughs> anyway yeah, Tom it's on. been a pleasure on, having stuff. you on tonight I won't take up any yeah, more of your time you. and um, hopefully we can speak to you on all metal mode in the future as this is obviously the first we don't know how this is going yeah. to uh, be reacted to uh, as we don't have many followers, so we'll get you back on hopefully in the near future with with Mike, and we'll we'll go over everything again, no doubt. Yeah, that's be fine. Excellent, thanks a lot, Dave. Excellent. Well, as I say, it's been a delight speaking to you, and uh, well done. Congratulations, and Cheers. I look forward to seeing yeah. you at Detectable. Excellent. Good luck to everybody out there detecting. Everybody Brilliant. have a lovely time. So that was me tonight going solo without Mike. Uh, hopefully, what a two of you have listened to who, who normally join the All Metal Mode pod, All Metal Mode UK podcast. Uh, thanks very much for tonight's guest Tom uh, to come in, coming on board tonight and discussing what was in the newspapers and the media the last couple of weeks or so. Uh, I'm Dave Sadler. Um, if you listen to the mix down that's coming, you'll be able to find out our. Uh, coordinates to find out more about the Archaeology Metal Detecting magazine other than just googling it uh, thank you all for listening and hope to speak to you all soon The Archaeology and Metal Detecting magazine acts as a hub for information offering articles from archaeologists, detectorists and other specialists throughout the genre. Featuring many links, event info and news articles associated to archaeology and metal detecting. We also offer professional review services and promotion for books, resources, videos, documentaries, gadgets, equipment and much, much more. 
The magazine is run by the archaeological and metal detecting community for the archaeological and metal detecting community. So come visit us at archmdmag.com. That's archmdmag.com. And check out information from our media section with all the latest content, news from the Archaeology Channel, podcast, and the YouTube channels that feature the now legendary Digger Dawn, The Man with the Hat, and Archeo Duck, just to name a few. If you would like to offer an article, link, or inquire about other services, then pay us a visit at archmdmag.com and drop us a line.